Welcome to eLibrary Minnesota using Elm and the Classroom. In today's module, we will discuss using EBSCO's Explora Primary product. EBSCO's Explora Primary um, is a repository of elementary level magazines, encyclopedias, ebooks, and just research articles. Really, it's starting to introduce that higher level thinking to your students. So instead of researching something simple like dogs or cats, you can start researching questions like, should we have a classroom pet? Um, it is their introduction to academic research. The interface to Explora isn't maybe as updated as they're used to seeing. It's not super jazzy, but it, the, the heart of the content is really what we want. It's research-based articles for them to start doing some critical thinking and and uh, balanced research on different perspectives. To access the platform, you can click on the student research button in eLibrary Minnesota and Explora Kids. So searching EBSCO Explorers Primary, you are going to want to type in the search box. Um, and then to start researching something like, should we have a classroom pet? You probably want to start thinking about keyword searching. So instead of asking the whole phrase or what are the pros and cons of having a classroom pet or things like that, we'd want to start asking um, just a keyword search, maybe like classroom pets. So that's an, a new concept probably for our youngest learners um, to introduce that keyword searching. So that's something to keep in mind if you bring students here and ask them to do their own searching. Once you get to a results screen, um, let's say our search was classroom pets, you'll see it looks kind of like this. So again, this can be a little overwhelming for younger students, um, but you can curate articles for them too. So you can change the publication date if you're looking for something more or less current. You can search for different Lexile ranges um, and you can, and the Lexile's up here as well um, on each article. And then you can choose HTML and sometimes full text there are benefits and drawbacks to both of those things, um, but HTML does have a little bit more interactive functionality, so just to keep that in mind. Once you're in an article, so let's say we picked one of those articles from the previous screen, and this is kind of what it might look like. Um, you can see you can print or download this article. You can save it to your Google Drive. It will connect to your school's account. Um, in most cases, I've usually had that work. Um, you can copy the MLA citation here, and then you can click this chain link button to get the link. If you use the URL at the top of the page um, in the browser that you're in, it will not work. You have to use their permalink function. Um, once you're in an article detail, also, um, this is the HTML version of this article on Pablo Picasso. This is not the PDF version. But since I chose the HTML version, I do have a bunch of accessibility features that I could use. I can listen to this article in different accents, English accents. Um, I can change the reading voice to female or male. Um, and, and then, I, like I said, different accents. You can click on different parts of the article and listen, make the text bigger or smaller. Um, you can even download the MP3. So if you have a student that is visually impaired, you could download or just needs uh, auditory um, aid of having the MP3. That's kind of a neat feature that you can use if you're in the HTML version of an article in Explora. To share links, um, just that reminder that the URLs in the browser do not work. You have to use the permalink. So get to that chain link um, icon on each article. And then it will pop up this little thing at the top that says permalink. And you can copy that and you can put this into any um, assignment you may have, any article that you want to share. You can use this link to put into your LMS, um, uh, Schoology, Seesaw, etc. So if you were to curate articles for your students and you'd want them all to read the same article, you could do it this way. Thank you. That's it for now. Proceed to the next slide so you can um, try it out for yourself and answer some questions to check your understanding. Thank you.